Yaakov's giving blessings to the kids and to the grandkids. Yosef brings his two sons in front of Yaakov to receive a blessing. And the firstborn Menashe places on Yaakov's, in front of Yaakov's right hand, he places Ephraim, who's younger, in front of Yaakov's left hand, so that the right hand will bless the firstborn, and the left hand will bless the younger one. <clears throat> he famously switches his hands, right? So he puts his right hand on the younger one, and his left hand on the older one, and the younger one, Ephraim, receives the, the better bracha. And so the commentators discuss this a lot, um, and they ask, like, why didn't he just say, hey, Menashe, scoot over, Ephraim, move over, and just place them where they're supposed to be. Why this whole, like, it's like a dance or something, you know, what's going on? So um, I saw a nice explanation by Rab Rabbi Yisachar Frand. He says, you know, he knew the truth, that um, from Menashe was supposed to come a spir spiritual leaders, uh, from Ephraim was to come spiritual leaders, from Menashe, there would be some evildoers, and he knew that uh, that the truth was Ephraim was supposed to get the bracha. That's the truth. However, um, it was uncomfortable. It was an uncomfortable situation. Sometimes when you when you're trying to implement truth, live a life based on truth, and doing the right thing, sometimes it could be uncomfortable. And he was afraid if he uprooted Reuven from his spot and moved him all the way over to the other spot, it would have hurt his feelings. So, a compromise was to switch to just switch the, switch the hands, so that on one hand he didn't uproot him completely. On the other hand. He did still give him the bracha. So he's still on the right side, but he's getting a little bit lesser blessing. And he says this is a lesson in life. And when you have to live your life based on truth, you have to do the right thing. And if that was what had to be done, it had to be done. But you don't have to always have to do it in like a, an aggressive way. You could do it in as gentle of a way as possible. So I was thinking about this. It's one example I thought uh, from my life when I was in um, Yeshiva Mer Kazarav. I was a Baal Tshuva, I was you know, newly religious, it was probably my second second year into Judaism. And uh, I went to this Yeshiva Goa, Merkaz Um, I was at like a Baal Tshuva year before that. And I was like, saw all these amazing learners and I was like, wow, like, I want that, I want to be around them. So I I started out like in Shir Aleph, in the first Shir, <clears throat> Shir Bet, whatever. And uh, I wanted to I wanted to be like this big Rav, Rav Sturin, who ended up being like the Rav, of, I think of Yerushalayim. Our Rav Arya Sturm, I wouldn't have been in his shear. So I, I went and sat in his shear. I was, uh, I guess, like kind of a little young, uh, some chutzpah. And so I wasn't, I didn't really, I didn't really know how to learn. I felt intellectually I could like kind of figure out what was going on, but I didn't really know how to learn. And so he, uh, you know, he gently pulled me aside afterwards. He goes, listen, how long have you been uh, in yeshiva? <laughs> he didn't say how long have you been religious, you know, but like how long have you been in yeshiva? And he like said to, to me very gently, what needed to be said. He's basically like, go back to Shira Al and Bet and go go learn there. But he could have done it in like a, in an aggressive way. I just remember him in a good way because of that. Like that was the truth. The truth had to be done, had to be said. In life, you have to say the truth. You can't live kind of just covering things up. But you can do it in a certain way that can allow people to re retain their dignity and uh, in a sensitive way that make them feel still loved and appreciated. And that's what Yaakov was doing with the switching of the hands.